Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson says that it is not a negotiation, but rather a conversation he's having with Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene and her hard right allies in the House. This over policy demands they say must soon be met in order to stave off Greene's threat to oust Johnson as Speaker, including no more aid to Ukraine and the defunding of special counsel Jack Smith's probes of Donald Trump. Joining us now, NBC News political contributor and Punchbowl News co-founder Jake Sherman. Jake, welcome. It's good to see you. So Mike Johnson almost laughed off the idea that he was under a deadline from Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene and her allies to concede to their demands or else. Here's Johnson with you yesterday. Let's play that. She doesn't have much hearing. She's been paraphrasing here. She wants to hear an answer soon or something like that. Sure. Look. <laughs> Um, I'm going to, we're going to process these ideas just like we do, all ideas and all input from members. And, and uh, this is not a negotiation. I'm doing my job. And, and one of the, part of the job is taking suggestions and thoughtful ideas from members. And that's what we're doing. My, my, was that an eye roll that we detected? But Jean promised, Green rather promised, that this was the week that she's going to push for a vote uh, to vacate. And now... She seems to have struck a, a somewhat softer tone, apart from her deadline, of course. So what's the latest on this? And does any legit threat to remove Johnson still exist? Great to see you, too, Alex. Let's start with the last question first. There is no threat that Mike Johnson will lose his job. I mean, maybe one in a 100. Uh, Democrats have already given up the game and said, basically, we're going to back you to Mike Johnson if, if Marjorie Taylor Greene moves against you. So that gives, that gives Mike Johnson the leeway to really not pay attention to Marjorie Taylor Greene any more than he's paying attention to any other House Republican. As you saw in that clip right there, uh, when I asked him about that deadline, he basically said, listen, I'm listening to Marjorie Taylor Greene. I listen to all different members. This is not a negotiation. I appreciate her suggestions. Um, and that's why there's no threat. And some of these suggestions, Alex, are just uh, not feasible, right? He's not going to be able to strip money uh, from Jack Smith, the special counsel who's investigating Donald Trump, because that would never get through the Senate. That would never get to the White House and be signed by Joe Biden. It's a pipe dream. So uh, there are some lawmakers, Alex, up here who live in a reality that's detached from the world that we live in. And that's what we're seeing with with Miss Green's requests here for the most part. Um, they're just not they're not part of the reality that we're all living in. Yeah, and, and add also defunding the aid to Ukraine to, to that list. Right. Um, so um, let's talk about where former President Donald Trump factors into all this, because included in these demands from Green and her cohorts is the defunding of special counsel Jack Smith's probes of former President Trump, which Trump has, of course, endorsed. Trump has also, according to reports, made it very clear that he doesn't want any more GOP infighting over a speaker battle six months now before the election. It's not a good look. So what can you tell us about Trump's impact on these talks? Well, first of all, there's probably no one in the House of Representatives who reveres and looks up to Trump as much as Marjorie Taylor Greene does. I don't think, Alex, that Donald Trump has some sort of special affinity for Mike Johnson as much as he doesn't want a distraction, as he already has enough distractions being in the middle of, of several criminal investigations and a court trial. Uh, he doesn't want any distractions on Capitol Hill that could further fracture the Republican Party. He wants to win, and, and this he sees this as just exactly that, a distraction in his chances to win the presidency. But listen, I, I think there's no doubt that Trump has been dispositive and has helped Johnson in this instance by basically telling, if not telling Green to back off, certainly not voicing support for the motion to vacate. And quite honestly, Mike Johnson himself has wrapped himself in Donald Trump's uh, cloak, so to speak, and has been at Mar-a-Lago, went to his mm -hmm. donor retreat last weekend, uh, is pushing bills at his at his behest. So this is not, uh, th there is no daylight effectively between Donald Trump and Mike Johnson uh, on almost any issue right now. Um, Jake, you also note that the new Republican chair of the House Appropriations Committee now says nonprofits can no longer receive federal earmarks. And that's a move that some Democrats are saying, look, it specifically is targeting pro-LGBTQ organizations in a further continuation of House GOP culture wars. It's using the federal budget to defend, uh, rather defund initiatives that they just don't like. Do you yeah, expect right. Republicans to use next year's spending bills? Are they going to continue fighting these same culture war provisions that they did all this last year? 
Yeah, Alex, absolutely. I mean, I don't think there's any question about that. I think that the, that the majority of House Republicans, or at least the vocal majority, um, uh, wants them to keep fighting these battles that they can't win over things like reproductive rights, abortion, LGBTQ uh, uh, services. And I think, to be honest with you, in a, in a Washington that's controlled two out of three branches of the governing uh, coalition. The White House and the Senate are controlled by Democrats. Uh, none of these things could get through. And some of these, there was some controversy over the last government funding bill that some LGBTQ service centers in places like, I think, Pennsylvania uh, had gotten earmarks. Those had to be stripped at the last minute in order for the government not to shut down. And what Republicans are saying is, listen, we need to keep these strictly focused on um, uh, governments and organizations that we can vet. It, but yes, I think they're going to keep fighting these culture wars undoubtedly, and I think it's even going to be heightened now that uh, there is hmm. some conservative discontent with Mike Johnson. Okay, Jake Sherman, always a good conversation with you. Thank you so much. Thank you.